Hello everyone, I'm Simon Andrelli, Application Engineer at CETI, and today let's take a look at the brand new Peel 2 CAD S 3D Scanner. Obviously, before we can begin scanning, we need to unbox all the components, so let's see what we can find inside the rugged travel case. Once we open it up, we find the sleek Peel 2 S scanner, easily differentiated from the other Peel scanners by its black color. Along with the scanner, you will find the power supply, which comes with a variety of different plugs to accommodate diverse regional standards. Then there's the USB cable, which allows you to plug in the scanner to your computer. Along with all that, you'll also get a plastic case with either one USB drive if you purchase the Peel 2S or two USB drives if you purchase the Peel 2 CAD S. One has the software licensing and calibration file, while the other has the licensing of the CAD reverse engineering module. In a small pouch, you'll find special targets that Peel calls turtle targets that allow you to gain better tracking of parts at certain angles. We'll take a look at how those work in just a little bit. And lastly, in the top portion of the case, we'll find two boxes of 500 each 3mm reflective positioning targets used for tracking. Below the foam, we can find a welcome card and then a quick start guide to show you the proper connection procedure. Below that, a factory calibration certificate. And at the very bottom of the record case, you'll find a wooden box, which is your calibration plate. This plate will be used to calibrate your scanner to make sure it's running at optimal accuracy, so please make sure to keep it safe. So of course, as soon as we unbox our components, we'll likely want to scan something. So to do that, we have to connect everything together. We already have our computer started with the PL software running, and then we simply have to plug in the USB cord into the computer, then the power supply into the wall, and then we'll locate a small plug found on the USB cord, and that's where you'll want to plug in the other end of the power supply. Also remember to plug in your CAD dongle if you purchase the CAD version of the scanner to use the reverse engineering software capabilities. So go ahead and pick up the scanner, take the non-connected end of the USB cable, and proceed to plug it into the back of the scanner. The arrow should be facing upward, and you should feel a small click. Here, the Peel Engineer is using an optional turntable. It's very easy to throw some targets on it, and that will allow you to place a part on top and start scanning very quickly. So the software has recognized the scanner. We click Start, and we can begin scanning by holding down the yellow trigger. The scanning process is easy and straightforward, very similar to that of spray painting. Simply move the scanner around the part in different angles to make sure to capture all necessary surfaces. So let's take a quick look at the previously mentioned turtle targets and they, how they work. So let's reset the scan. Let's place a different sculpture on the turntable. And now let's grab the little pouch out of the travel case. Let's grab the turtles out of there and place the turtle targets around the part. So this will allow you now to scan at different angles, essentially angles at which the targets on the turntable would not have been properly captured. All right, so we'll just let's take a look at a quick demonstration of just how that works. Again, just hold down that trigger button and virtually spray paint the part. All right, let's move on to calibration. So go ahead and grab the wooden calibration plate at the bottom of your scanner travel case. And in the software, locate the Configure menu, select Scanner, and then Calibrate Peel. This will launch the calibration visual, grab the scanner, place it roughly a foot away from the calibration plate, and while holding the trigger, move it upward as the software captures 10 different measurements. After a quick calculation, you'll be notified that the scanner is calibrated. It's really that simple and takes as quick as 30 seconds. So our equipment is connected, calibrated. Let's do some actual scanning. That's as simple as pressing the scan button in the Peel software, grabbing the scanner, a part, and beginning scanning by simply holding down the trigger button. The software has some very helpful features, such as on the left side of the screen, you'll notice a distance indicator. You want to hold the scanner about a foot away, which will make that distance indicator green. 
If you move too close or too far, it will indicate as such and allow you to readjust. So here you'll see the engineer uh, switching from scanning in his hand to scanning on a turntable. And you'll notice that when he resumes the scan, the scanner picks right up where it left off without any issues. So switching positions, pausing and resuming scans because perhaps you got a phone call, none of that is a problem. If you notice, the engineer is not looking at the scanner or the part, but the screen. He really just wants to make sure that the part is centered in the scan area, the distance indicator is in the right position, and that he's capturing the part from all angles. So a nice slow pace while varying the scanner angle and position will get you a nice looking scan. There we go. And that's about all the data that should be necessary. So as soon as the scanning process is completed, you'll press the done button and a mesh is automatically generated. One neat feature is that the scanner actually captures data at its maximum resolution. So if you finish a scan and realize that perhaps you needed some more fidelity, you can simply up the resolution and reprocess the data without having to rescan the part. In this case, the data was scanned at about 0.3 millimeter resolution, which is perfectly adequate for this particular project. Now let's switch to a bigger part. One thing we want to note here is that the recommended part size for the Peel 2S is about 2 to 20 inches, or up to a half a meter. Now we're not saying that scanning a bigger part is not possible, simply that the small capture area of the Peel 2S will make scanning larger objects a lengthy task. So that's why if you have objects that are rather large, say six foot long or things the size of a car, you're much better off with the Peel 2 CAD. Now if you have large parts that are also have some fine details to them, you can actually use both the Peel 2 and Peel 2S to combine the data together. One last thing to note is the versatility. You can scan architectural models, mechanical parts, whatever you may need. So now that we've captured the data, let's take a look at how to clean up that data and send it to your favorite CAD software, such as SolidWorks. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the polygonal mesh of one of the demo parts scanned earlier. It was done at fairly high resolution. Each one of those triangles you're seeing are 0.3 millimeters. And the first thing we have to do is just clean up the little bit of noise we have. Could be reflections, could have some surrounding surfaces like the turntable. So we can use a very useful selection tool called Connected. We simply click on the part and select all connected triangles. From there, we could just click on our invert button, which selects all the disconnected triangles. In this instance, we can simply delete them. So a very quick way to make sure that there are no noise meshes present and only the data you're interested is there. Once we have a nice clean mesh and we want to now start extracting features for subsequent transfer to CAD software, we must first align the part in the world coordinate system. To do that, we need to generate a few features first. We'll start with extracting a plane, and we can do that just by clicking on the plane button and the planar area itself. As you can see, we have intelligent tools that allow you to look at the deviation map of the selection so that you can evaluate if your selection is correct, is this, if the surface is straight or not, and whether you should use some of the filtering tools to make sure only the data you want is selected. So we've done one plane, we'll do one more in a different direction, so we're able to do multiple selections to generate that secondary plane. And our deviation tool shows us that this data is definitely not as planar as our previous selection. Lastly, using our regular lasso selection tool, we'll simply select the whole feature and generate a circle on plane two. It's really that simple. So now that we've generated enough features for alignment, let's use the alignment tool. We simply get to select our first plane then select whatever world plane we want to constrain it to. In this case, we'll use the XY plane. For plane two, we'll use the YZ plane. And for our last feature, the circle, the software intelligently knows that the last remaining option is the origin of Y. So here we go, our part is aligned. And obviously for different projects and different parts, 
you'll be able to align the parts in any way that best works for you. Another very useful tool within this offer is the cross-section tool. So we can use an existing plane and get a cross-sectional profile, which we can then subsequently send to our CAD software to generate a sketch. So you're able to offset the plane as much as necessary to make sure the profile is in the exact spot you need, and then simply click Create. So from here, we have to just generate the rest of our features. We can use our cylinder tools to create some holes that we may have here. More planes, slots, spheres, polylines. You can measure angles and distances. So there's a plethora of tools that will help you accomplish your project. Even if you have some freeform surfaces, such as this curved area here, you can use our powerful single patch tool and generate a fitted surface that can be later trimmed, joined, and so forth. Another example of the powerful tools you'll have at your disposal is the Silhouette tool. It'll generate a contour curve around the whole part. So say that you're trying to generate some packaging for a product, this will make it a breeze. Moving on to some polygonal tools, let's take a quick look at the hole filling. Uh, we have full hole filling, we have partial hole filling, as well as bridge filling. So you have full control over any hole filling that you may have to do to your model. Okay. There's also a defeature tool, so that if you've captured a, a bumpy area, and perhaps you'd prefer to be nice and smooth, it's a quick way to do that. The software essentially just deletes the area and fills it in for you automatically. And one last tool that we'll take a look at before jumping over to our CAD software is the auto surfacing tool. So sometimes you have geometry that does not have to be represented in parametric features such as cones and cylinders. Sometimes you just need to generate some simple surfaces on your part. So in this case, we'll isolate a small portion of the part that we're interested in. We'll use some of our cleanup tools to smooth the edges and get it ready for surfacing. Then what the auto surfacing command will actually do is generate hundreds, sometimes actually thousands of small surfaces that are fitted to the underlying mesh and then joined together into one large surface. So it's a really fast way to take a polygonal data and convert it to say IGES or a step file. So let's take a look at that. And after a little bit of calculating, here we are, a beautiful surface that's fitted to our underlying mesh. So now let's go ahead and see how we would use all those generated features in our CAD software. In this case, we're exporting all those features as a single IGES file, but as of the newest update, we're able to use the transfer to SOLIDWORKS button to achieve the same effect. So first, we'll import the STL file, just as a graphics body, which we can use as an overall reference. And then let's go ahead and import our entities that we acquired with our PL2 CAD software. As you can see, all the silhouettes, the cross sections, the cylindrical entities, everything is copied over. We can now use one of the planes uh, to go ahead and generate a sketch. And the great thing about those cross sections that we created earlier is the fact that we can now use them as snapping features for our sketch. When we finish the sketch, we're obviously able to extrude it and use the underlying STL to make sure we're building the correct model. So we would simply continue feature by feature and finish the entire part. You now have a wealth of tools to convert real life objects to CAD accurately and efficiently. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us at CATI.com. Have a great day.